hello and i'm back and this time i'm going to tell you absolutely everything that happened okay um i wrote a list down uh because i really needed for you guys to know how this work and so you won't be surprised about when you get there okay i'll tell you about this in just a minute what i'm sitting on <laughs> okay so i arrived at the airport and nobody speaks english nobody so if you speak spanish that's a plus um if you do not speak spanish then you need to get a translator or uh, i end up getting the google translator on my phone um and i also got the google uh gps map because the i have the iphone uh 8 plus and the regular just the the regular maps just for whatever reason it didn't work anything that you try to do uh, nobody speaks English they will not know what you're talking about we found maybe two people out of the thousands and thousands of people that we tried to talk to to get an understanding of where we were or how to get to where we needed to get so we end up finding where we needed to be so if you do not speak Spanish then make sure that you get a translator or go on Google Translator and upload that app um, so you can at least speak it and show them on your phone what you're trying to say. So um, we finally got out of the airport and the traffic is so bad. I mean, um, and I, I think that they don't have any type of traffic laws. So you don't think they're going to people staying in the same lane because they don't. So you got to watch every single angle. Right beside me. Like I can literally touch this truck. Right? And when I tell you, I was really depressed because just to keep on looking, 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 trying not to... It's a lot. I mean, people, they don't stay in the lane. They they cross lanes. They cut you off. Everything. Thank, thank you, baby. Some people come in head on. You can be in one lane. Another person can be in this lane. And they're going to turn completely left. And you trying to go straight. It's just a lot. So the driving there is a lot. I don't think they have any traffic laws. So if you rent a car, then make sure that... Um, you you rent a car and you be careful about driving because they're driving nobody cares you, all you can hear is horns blowing every five minutes every five seconds and people driving you can get a car coming head on going every which way um every car we actually got in the accident when we was there uh that's what i mean by the driving is really extreme uh the roads is really horrible you do have to get car insurance for um your tires and for your windows and things because um the roads are really that bad now if you decide to get if you decide to get around in a taxi or uber um now the taxis you just have to make sure i'm gonna show you what the taxis look like here they go And then the Ubers, I'm going to show you what they look like as well. Here they go. Um, now, when you're doing a taxi, you just have to make sure that you know that you're not going to be the only one in there. Um, it's going to be about five or six more people in there with you. Um, so just be aware of that. So I would recommend that you probably go ahead and just rent, rent a car and kind of because everybody just even the taxis drive crazy even the taxis um we just just i'm just not used to, to, to that and that's just me i'm just not used to that type of driving where people was coming head on to you or cutting you off not standing no lanes um pe people coming from the left crossing people walking on the street dogs walking across the street just really just I'm just not used to that, but you might be. I'm not. It was a little rough for me, my own opinion. Okay. And what we were there for this particular time was we needed to get our blood work drawn. So we got the blood work done, and we had to go to a different place to get the the um, uh, x-rays done. So we had to get x-rays too, which was an extra $50. 
So keep in mind that the x-rays, you do have to pay for that yourself. That was an extra $50. Okay. Um, and we were actually supposed to uh, speak to the doctor that day, but he was so busy, like he stayed busy. Uh, we didn't get to speak to him that day, but we did get to speak to him the day of our surgery. So on the 7th, um, um, he called us into the office and he asked us several questions um, about our health. Um, so he was looking at our charts and asking us several questions about our health. Um, after that, he asked us, uh, what is it that, what type of butt we wanted? And um, so I showed him some pictures of what I did want. Um, I showed him some pictures. Um, and I also added my chin. I, I actually supposed to be wearing my little chin thing, um, but sometimes it just gets so tight, I, I get a headache. Um, so I do supposed to wear my, my little chin thing. And I did get my chin done as well. That was an extra $300. So I did pay for that. So after that, he pulled us to the back. And once he pulled us to the back, um, me and my daughter, uh, we started to get prepped for the surgery. Um, so we had to get our gowns and things on. Um, and he come into the room and he mark your body. Um, and he say, you ready? You ready for your big butt? <laughs> and he marks your body. And then we sit there. Now, I was the first one. My, I, I, I went first. Then my daughter went second. Hello guys, so right, well, I'm in the room, I'm in my little outfit, it's my little outfit, I'm in the room, me and my daughter get to be in the same room when we get finished, so I'm going in first, that's my daughter over there, <laughs> of course my husband is here, and I'm going in first, I'm a little scared, <laughs> I'm a little scared, but uh, I would definitely, the place is really nice, so... After that, what I did was um, they come into the office. The uh, an Another doctor come into the office and he asked a lot of questions like, how do I feel? Where am I from? Um, am I nervous? Um, basically, somebody just come to really just calm you down if you're really nervous. So they came in and made me feel extremely comfortable. I, I can say that. Um, after that, a, a, a nurse come in and they give you a blue pill. And once they give you a blue pill, that really didn't do in, in, anything for me. But what the blue pill is, is it, it basically um, calms you down if you are panicking or having anxiety or, or you really, really nervous. It, it, it really just calms you down. Um, what I had to do next after that, they gave me, they put the IV in and my veins is horrible, y'all. I do not think I have not one vein left <laughs> that's how i feel but since they couldn't find my veins they stuck it in my hand here so i got the iv stuck into my hand and once they gave me the iv and seen that the fluids was, was was going that's when they gave me the anesthesia um i tried to stay up y'all I, I i don't know what i was trying to do i was like yeah i'm gonna stay up i'm i'm, I'm Lord have mercy. I think I was gone in like two seconds. <laughs> gone. Now, I'm take, taking my notes. Now, after that, then the next thing I know, I woke up. I didn't. I did not feel anything. Not not one bit of the surgery. I did not feel anything. Um. So when I woke up, um, I already had my uh, uh garment on. When I woke up, I had my garment on. Um, I wasn't in any pain, um, but I was extremely sore. Um, I did a quick update video for you guys. I woke up and I didn't feel anything. Um, I did not feel anything from the surgery. Um, when I woke up, I had my garment on and I was extremely sore, sore and stiff. Just sore like I've been working out for a month straight, non-stop, I, I, I couldn't, it was just, the soreness is so sore that it's painful, if that makes sense. Um, make sure that when you um, 
having your surgery that you bring some of your stuff to the hospital because they're going to ask you for your uh, pads to go inside of your garment as well. So when they do change you, um, or if you have to go to the restroom, when they open up your garment, they're going to ask you to put your compression pads or whatever you bring for extra compression to go in your stomach. Now, I do want to tell you as well that when you go to Dr. Malona, um, he gives you a garment. So he gives you a faja. He gives you your front board and your back board. So you really don't need that that extra compression, those big con uh, contour compression things. You really don't need those. And I'm going to show you what those look like. Also, make sure that you bring your butt pillow. Uh, to be honest, y'all, I had the black faja, the, the little butt pillow pillow, and I had the baby uh, little sitting butt pillow as well. Um, I had both, and they both came in handy. I can tell you that. Um, I also had one of the little neck rolls that came in handy when I was going to sleep. It helped a lot. One thing I do want to tell you about the medicine is that the medicine in the DR is nothing compared to the medicine in, in the U.S. Um, the U.S. medicine is much, much stronger. Um, you don't feel anything. You know you get Percocets and you get things like that. And um, it just makes you feel a lot better. But the medicine that's in the DR is not as strong as theirs as the U.S. Um, so don't expect that. Some people say that they bring U.S. pain medicine over because the, the medicine that the DR has is, is just not as strong as the medicine at, in U, U.S. So please don't expect it. Um, you actually really don't even feel the medicine. I, I mean, I was actually sore the whole entire time, uh, even with the medicine. Um, we had to get up and walk every hour on an hour. Um, it's not as difficult to walk. Make sure that you bring your compression socks. Your compression socks is a must because as you put this tight, tight faja on, uh, your legs will swell, will kick, will swell extremely large. So make sure that you keep your compression socks on because that was my problem that I didn't put my compression socks on. And it's three weeks later and my feet are still swollen. So um, make sure that you bring those to put on exactly um, when you leave the hospital. Um, so as we're going home, you are going to have a lot of swelling. It's normal. I mean, a lot of swelling. Your whole body is going to feel like it's swole. You, you're going to be able to feel the swelling on the inside and the swelling on the outside. And that's from the lipo. That's for the, from the intensive lipo. Um, you're going to feel extremely tight because the uh, faja is extremely tight. Uh, and then as the swelling goes down on a daily, you will be able to tell the swelling going down on a daily because your faja get a, a little looser at, at a time. Um, like I said, you're going to be extremely sore and extremely irritable. So whoever you have going with you, your, your boyfriend, your husband, your best friend, let them know you're going to be irritable. Um, because it's just a, it's just, it's, you're going through a lot. So you're going to be irritable. Um, make sure you bring your, uh, pillows, your sitting pillows and, and things to the hospital. So, cause you have to leave there. You do stay at the hospital for one day and then you leave there after that. So make sure that you have your pillows and, and stuff to be able to sit in the car to go to wherever you, um, got your place, your, your, your place at. Um, now, in the Dominican Republic, sometimes the power goes on and off. Um, sometimes, for me, it sometimes got extremely hot uh, because the power goes off at certain times of, of, of the day, uh, like three hours or four hours at a time. So, sometimes it can be extremely hot and it, um, uh, it, it kind of melts your food in the freezer. Uh, so, 
we stayed in the Airbnb and the the um Airbnb that we had, we had one AC that was in one room and I thought the whole place was um had AC when I booked it because it said it had AC, but what they mean was it had AC in one room. Um, but when the power goes off, that goes off as well. And, um, you have little fans, but when the power go off, the fans don't work neither. So it, it's, it's times where you might be extremely hot as well. And you, on top of the tightness and the soreness and the swelling and the just, just, just real irritable. But once it come on back on, you will be fine. But, um, you'll be fine. Now, he's going to give you a list of medications. Once you get the list of medications, take them as it, as it says. Um, like I said, it's not as strong as the medicine here in the U.S., but he do give you di di directional directions on what to take and how to take it, okay? Mind you, drink a lot of water and a lot of juice. That's, that helps drain the fluids. You got to keep drinking a lot of water and a lot of juice which is going to help drain your fluids and help your healing process. Um, and the walking. Walking is going to help with the stiffness. Um, just keep keep walking and keep walking as much as you can. Um, now, Dr. Malona, do not let you get massages until four days after your surgery. Now, after that, now your massages, they help. They really do help, but they hurt. And they hurt extremely bad. Um, and because I guess it's just common sense, you just had sur surgery and she have to get a lot of the fluids down um, so you can feel better. Now, after you get the massages, um, you feel better every time. Every time after you get the massage, you feel better. I went to uh, Magic Hands by Yeenie. If you want to look her up on Instagram, you can. She's, uh, Magic Hands by Yeenie. She is good. She's really, really good. But when she's giving you the massages, what they do is they try to massage all the excess fluid down and they take this needle. And in this needle, if you, if she see a, a fluid packet, they pop the needle in into your body and all the fluid just come out of that needle. Um, some of the parts of your body is numb and some ain't. So when she, she popped that needle right up in here and I about scream, I about, I about tore it up y'all. I'm telling you, I about scream. But, um, the, the massages are extremely painful, but like I said, it do help afterwards and everybody is different, but from what me and my daughter experienced, uh, the massages is extremely painful okay so within a couple of days uh i guess about five days we go back to the doctor to the doctor um well no it was a six day the sixth day we went back to the doctor they um took my tubes out because you have drain tubes so you got to have a little blood bag uh for them couple of days um so they took the tubes out uh which the the, the tube part when you're getting the massage hurts the worst because of course you got tubes that's in your body and it just hurts so every time she rub it it's i mean to the touch sensitive like it's really really sensitive so but when, when they take the tubes out it's a relief like the your whole body just changed like it's just a relief once those tubes come out um and then once the tubes come out um they clean you up and things and you can get another faha at that time um if you can if you want another faha they'll put you in a smaller faha uh it's 130 dollars us um for another size and you have to drop three sizes down so you know that was tight with the swelling that i was already having um but so i went on and got a second faha so i got the two fa fa fahas so i went from a large actually to an extra small so and and that's not only the extra small but that's with the boards in you inside of the faha as well um so we i was extremely tight as for, then as well so you you kind of get used to the first one but when you get used to the first one get ready because when that second one come you can be extremely tight again now, when you take your faha off, so, okay, so when I came 
back home and you, you know, you have to use the bathroom and things, you take your faha off, right? It feels so weird. It feel like your body is falling off you. It, it, it feel like you have to put the faha back on because it's like, I, I don't know if your skin, where you, where you had the lipo just have not connected back or whatever, but it feel like it's falling off you and, and you get dizzy and you get, you, you start feeling nauseous. So, it, it, it makes you put your faha back on um, for the for the first couple of like I I I would say the first week it just feel weird it, it's it's just the weirdest feeling when you take the faha off and that was my experience that was my experience um, now sleeping sleeping was so uncomfortable I think it was uh, the the fahas are so tight that that you, you, you know if you don't have a faha if you don't have a faha on um, you, your skin stretches to where it need to stretch to be able to lay down. But the faha so tight that when you go to lay on your stomach, because of course you can't lay on your butt, that your skin don't move. So when your skin don't move, oh, it feels so awkward. So what I did was I told my husband, pull out so I can pull my skin up to at least be com comfortable. <laughs> um, sleeping on your stomach is very uncomfortable. It's the worst. It's very, especially when you feel like you, uh, you have to sleep on your stomach. You have no other choice. Um, it's, it's just very uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable for me, just tight. And, um, but so, cause it was so uncomfortable, it was so uncomfortable. What I did was I started looking on, I started looking at other options that I could do because it was just so uncomfortable. I said, we got to do something because I, I wasn't getting any sleep unless I took some type of sleeping pill to make myself go to sleep. Because the pain pills don't even make you go to sleep. You can for, you can forget that. Um, so, um, what what I started doing was looking online and seeing other type of options. options and this is what I found. And it is the most comfortable is thing it, it was a big relief for me and my daughter um you just put your butt in it and it's only maybe two dollars at the store you go and get your little inner tube put it on the bed put your butt in the hole and your feet is up and you good to go it's so comfortable and it's it, it's just it works so much better for me that's about it it's going to be extremely uncomfortable and extremely sore um you you are going to want to take the faha off but keep the faha on as long as you can matter of fact i'm three weeks post-op now and i do want to say my feet are still swole um when i got back i went to the doctor and i, I had to get some more compression socks um, because my feet are still swollen, so don't expect for your body to go down fast because it's not. And then it also depends on your age. My my daughter is 20 years old, and she up driving, walking, doing her thing. Me, I'm still in the bed. My feet still swole. Um, I'm still stiff. Um, I'm still sore. Um, but he did. Ex my surgery was actually four hours and a half, and my daughter's surgery was actually just two two hours so just depending on who you are and your body i'm a lot older than my daughter so older women it's going to take you a little longer to heal um younger women you might bounce right back but every person is different um like i said my feet are still swole um um, um I, I i still have um I'm, I'm i'm still sore um so just just know that as well. It is a hard process. It's not as easy as everybody make it look. It's 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 a little difficult um, for me in my age. Um, it's it's a little diff, diff difficult. And the doctor told me that I needed to stay in my faha for at least three months. So I got three months. They say you can start sitting on your butt about three to four weeks. Um, and but you you have to um get a couple of things to just help you out and that's your pillows and i'm gonna show you guys 
all of the pillows that I did get because I really needed it um, just to be comfortable. So if I forgot anything, I'll tell you in my next video. My next video is going to be what I wish I would have brought. Um, these are the things that I wish I should have brought. Um, that will be in my next video. And if I missed anything um, in this video, please ask me any questions so I can say, so I can answer them and help you out for your BBL and intensive lipo. Um, anything that you want to know, please ask and I'll tell you exactly how my experience went. Some people bounce back, some people don't. Also, I do want to tell you that you won't see your results at the beginning. So you have to wear the Faha because the Faha actually helps uh, mold your shape. So make sure you keep your Faha on as much as you can. Um, I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to do, once again, I'm going to do another video on what I wish I would have brought, which, which can help you out tremendously. Have a great day. Please like, please follow, and please subscribe. I got a lot more for you.